Shara from Woodshop Diaries, and in today's video, we're going to be building this glass door display cabinet. Now, side note, it's not actually glass, it's acrylic. So, to your surprise, I did not build this project out of plywood like I normally do. This time, I used some solid white oak from Weber Lumber. Now, this project is kind of bittersweet because I've been wanting to build this for a really long time, but behind the scenes, I had so many things going on that caused me to need to finish this project as quickly as possible. Rushing through a project is never the best way to do things, so had I had more time, there are definitely some things that I would have done different. I know it sounds crazy, but sometimes in this job, an extra day turns into being a week behind, and I just didn't have a week to spare. So, it is what it is. Anyway, I'll be discussing all the issues that I ran into trying to rush through this project and the things that I would do differently throughout the video, so if you're ready to dive in, let's go. If you'd like the dimensions and project details, I'm sharing the building plans plus all the tools and materials in the video description. Now, I mentioned that I built this project from White Oak. Weber Lumber provided me with the lumber here, but it all came in 1x6s and 1x4s, 6 foot long. So I had to glue them together to make the panels and rip them apart to make the doors and the trim. Of course, as an alternative, you could also avoid the glue ups and just use plywood if you preferred. I love white oak, but I'm kind of picky about grain pattern. I like straight grain best and the wavy swirly stuff just isn't really my favorite. So I picked through my boards to find my favorite pieces to glue up for the sides since these will be the most visible parts of the cabinet. I turned them down a little longer than I wanted my cabinet to be, then lay them out and glued them together. I glued up three long pieces for each side panel, then repeated the process with some shorter boards for the top and bottom panels of the main cabinet. Now, I know I could have used dowels to help line everything up a little bit, but I, I didn't. After these were dry, I sanded them to remove all the glue squeeze out and to flatten them out. I skipped filming that part because it was literally just like hours of me using an orbital sander, and there are more important things to cover with the time in this video. I trimmed each panel to final size using my circular saw and Craig AccuCut. Then I had my first lapse of judgment. I am building this cabinet out of white oak. Now, I actually got enough white oak that I can make the back of the cabinet a solid panel of white oak, but this is three quarter inch thick. It's incredibly heavy. So my first change of plans was swapping from a three quarter inch solid wood back to a quarter inch plywood back. I have this piece. I couldn't find any white or red oak quarter inch plywood in stock anywhere. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what kind of wood this is. So I'll try what I already have in my shop. Personally, it's not gonna bother me. I'm going to eat these words shortly. Because my original plan involved using solid wood, I had planned to cut a dado into the cabinet box sides to install the back to allow for movement. However, I don't know why it never occurred to me that since I was switching to a plywood back, a shallow rabbit would have been fine. So I could have just glued this up without the back panel and just waited for the oak sheet to come in if I had ordered some. All that said, I cut my dados in the cabinet sides for the back panel and if I were to do this over, I would definitely just rabbit the back edge. After the unnecessary dados were cut, I started laying out and marking my pieces to drill dowel holes. I assembled this cabinet box using dowels. The issue with this is that I didn't count how many dowel pins that I had and I didn't have enough to do both the cabinet box and the doors later. So in hindsight, I really should have just ordered more dowel pins before building this, but had I had counted first and realized that I wouldn't have had enough, I would have opted to use pocket holes and screws for the cabinet as these won't be seen in the finished project and kept the dowels to use on the doors later. But we'll get there when we get there. I marked and drilled dowel holes at each corner and carefully labeled each piece so that I knew how to assemble it when I got ready to glue up. Assembling the cabinet was incredibly stressful and required two people, which is just another reason to use pocket holes in this case, but what's done is done. I added the top and the bottom, then slid in the back panel and added the last side. I used some pipe clamps to kind of help push everything together. And once I had the whole box together, I clamped everything nice and tight until the glue was dry. Glue was everywhere. Everyone was mad. It wasn't a pleasant experience, but we survived. At this point, I was still contemplating my back panel ordeal. So while I overthought things, 
I went ahead and started gluing up some more panels to use as the shelves later. While these dried, I decided that I wasn't okay with the underlayment and I went on a mission to find some oak plywood. Long story short, I wasted an entire day driving around, but I did get my sheet of oak plywood. So I'm gonna eat my words here. And I said that I thought that this would look okay as is. And it, I mean, it does, it doesn't look horrible, but I put it together and I just, I wasn't feeling it. I found some quarter inch red oak plywood. Now it's not white oak, but the oak grain pattern, I think will look a lot better than this. And I think in the end, I'll be glad that I did this. But that said, I already got the dados cut and I need to remove this back panel. And it's gonna be kind of difficult to remove this back panel with dados. To replace it, I decided to cut out the top dado and slide the old panel out. Then I could slide the new one back in place. I started cutting out this dado with an oscillating saw, but it was burning the wood. So I swapped to a jigsaw. Then I swapped these panels out. Now, while I am happy that I did this, this did put me another day behind my already rushed build, but the cabinet box looked good. So pros and cons. I cut and sanded a shelf from the glue up that I was working on earlier and drilled pocket holes into the ends. Before adding this shelf to the cabinet, I glued a scrap strip onto the bottom of the cabinet. This is just a trim piece. Then I cut two pieces of one by two to go on the sides. These serve two purposes. They're just an extra trim piece, but they will also push the drawer in enough to clear the hinges once I add the door. I used these as spacer blocks to install the shelf using pocket hole screws, and then I added some glue onto the sides of these and glued them into the sides of the cabinet between the shelf and the bottom trim. In order to mount the drawer slides later, I needed some spacer blocks installed here to come flush to the inside of these trim pieces. So I glued some scrap two by two blocks in on each side. I didn't bother with screws, although they really wouldn't have hurt anything. Then I moved on to building the base. Since I was working with one by material, I needed to glue these together to make the two by twos for the base. I ripped some strips off the shelf glue ups because they needed to be trimmed down narrower anyway. Then I glued these together to make two by twos. After the glue dried, I cleaned them up on the table saw and trimmed them to length on the miter saw. Then I laid everything out on the workbench and started marking for dowels. I marked each joint where to drill the dowel holes and labeled everything carefully. I mentioned earlier how I wish that I had used pocket holes on the cabinet versus using dowels. But in this case, I am glad that I went with dowels. I think if I had used screws here, I would have had a lot of trouble with them running into each other at the corners. I drilled out my dowel holes using my dowel jig, then proceeded to glue everything up. Again, glue ups are stressful and messy and not at all my favorite, but I survived this one too. To make sure that this stayed flat, I actually clamped everything up on my table saw since I know it's a flat surface. This was actually pretty stressful too because I was getting glue all over the top of my table saw and I quickly scraped it off after everything was clamped. <laughs> after sanding the entire base to remove all the glue, I installed a rabbiting bit into my router to run along the outside edge. This is totally optional, but it just adds kind of a nice detail and a reveal between the base and the cabinet. My only advice is if you do this to make sure that you install your dowels far enough from the top edge to not route over them. Don't ask me why I would think to tell you that. <laughs> Since I was working with solid wood here, I decided to install the base similar to how you would install tabletops using these figure eight brackets. If you were building this from plywood, I'd probably suggest just screwing the base into the bottom of the cabinet. But in this case, since I'm using solid wood, I wanted to just make sure that I allowed for wood movement. I installed four of these brackets onto my base. Then I installed the base onto the bottom of the cabinet. Notice that the base actually sticks out the front about three quarters of an inch. This is so that it's flush to the front of the doors when they're added later. Speaking of doors, that's where I headed next. I ripped down and trimmed the pieces to make two identical doors. I laid out all my pieces on my workbench and made sure everything kind of fit together. And this is when I realized that I didn't have enough dowel pins to assemble both doors. 
I drove to town and I looked for 3 8 inch dowel pins with no luck and ordering some was going to take a couple of days. So I decided to use pocket holes and just plug the holes with some oak dowels that I had. This was definitely not ideal, but in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't a big deal. If I had foreseen this, I would have definitely saved the dowels that I used on the cabinet box for the doors and used pocket holes on the cabinet instead. But this isn't the end of the road here. I actually think now that the project is done, whenever I get some more time, I'm going to rip some really thin strips of leftover white oak and add kind of like a veneer on the back side of these doors that will cover these plugs but still look solid. For now, I just sanded it smooth and moved on. For the quote unquote glass, I actually used plexiglass. Real glass would be fine, but it's a little heavier, more fragile, and I can't cut it myself. So I used the rabbiting bit and cut a rabbit along the inside openings of the doors the same depth as the thickness of my plexiglass. I used the chisel to square the corners, then I cut my plexiglass to fit inside the rabbits. Before installing it, I built a few more things so that I could apply a finish to everything at once before I installed the glass pieces. I was waiting for the drawer slides to come in because I did have to order 12 inch slides, but I could go ahead and build the drawer box and just install it as soon as they came in. So I cut my drawer box pieces from some scrap plywood. And this process is the same one that I use in almost <laughs> every video. I cut dados to install the quarter inch plywood bottom, applied iron on edge banding to the tops and assembled using pocket holes and screws. Then I cut a drawer front to fit in the opening and I cut my three shelves to length. For these shelves, I wanted them to be adjustable. So I used a shelf pin jig to drill shelf pin holes along the sides of the cabinet. I made sure to drill my front holes far enough inset that the shelves would still be able to rest on them since they are quite a bit shallower than the cabinet sides. Now at this point, all of my pieces were cut, assembled, and ready to finish. So I could apply a clear poly to all the pieces separately before putting it all together. Once the poly had dried, I installed the plexiglass panels. And again, this didn't go as planned either. I had actually planned to install these using picture frame turn buttons so that they'd be easily removable for cleaning or if I ever decided to like frost them. However, once again, I didn't have enough. So I used some clear glue and just glued these in place. I will probably come back later, like I mentioned before, and cut some thin strips of oak to line the back side of these doors, which will cover the plexiglass edges and the pocket hole plugs. But for now, these pieces are at least in place. After the glue was dry, I used a concealed hinge jig to drill holes to install concealed hinges for frameless overlay doors. Then I hung these on the cabinet and adjusted the hinges so that the gap between the doors was about an eighth of an inch. Oh, and I added some simple black knobs to finish things up. Once the drawer slides finally came in, it was time to add the last piece, the drawer. I installed the slides onto the spacer blocks, then remove the piece that attaches to the drawer. Now, normally I don't remove this to install my door boxes, but in this case, since the doors were already on, I didn't have room to get my drill into the sides to install these in place. So I just screwed these brackets to the drawer box separately and then slid it all back in place. For the drawer front, I measured the gap between the bottom trim and the drawer box, and I saw that it was about a quarter of an inch. My drawer front should be about an eighth of an inch from the bottom trim, so that means it should overhang the bottom edge of the drawer box an eighth of an inch. So I removed the drawer box, centered the front side to side with an eighth inch overhang on the bottom, then screwed this in place from the inside of the drawer box. Before putting it back in the cabinet, I added some painter's tape so that I'll be able to pull it back out again after test fitting. After I made sure it fit properly, I added the knobs, took a step back, and admired my new build. I can't help but feel a little bittersweet about this project. 
Although it turned out nice and I'm ultimately happy with it, very few things went as planned and I feel like I'd cut a few corners that I wished I hadn't. But I'm going to revisit this again when I have some time and touch up the places that I'm not 100% happy with. Everything is fixable and while this may be complete, it's not technically finished. You may very well see it again. Anyway, I hope you learn from my mistakes to take your time and enjoy the process of the build. I also hope you enjoyed seeing this project come to life. Thanks so much for watching friends and until next time, happy building.